um, go ahead whenever you're ready. But if you want to wait for other people to come in, that's totally like that. <laughs> Okay. Should we go ahead and start? Yeah, if you'd like to, that's that's fine. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Let's start with a prayer. And if you can join me, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send for your spirit, and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hobby Academy had the great idea to talk about homeschool organization and what can be better than inviting a great group of moms from all grades who are also parent ambassadors at Colby Academy. Um, each of us bringing different ideas about organizing spaces, spaces according to our situation and necessities. Some moms have several children and some moms are homeschooling just one child, just like me. Um, some plan for a small room and others need to organize a large space. And we also need to take into account other things like supplies, textbooks and a storage space. First of all, um, each of us, we will introduce ourselves. So um, I am Veronica Foreman, better known as Ellis, Ellen's mom. We live in San Antonio, Texas, and we joined Colby Academy in 2014 when Ellen was in fourth grade. Now she's about to start 11th grade, and I love volunteering and working in a computer. This is my second year as part of the Pardon Ambassador Group, and I feel very honored to be invited to participate. As I was talking with a Colby mom uh, and friend this week, it wouldn't be possible to achieve all what we have done in a regular brick and mortar uh, school. Colby Academy has been a blessing for, for us, and I couldn't recommend online, homes, uh, online school or homeschool more highly. So, Nancy? Hi, my name is Nancy Menerick. Um, I have four kids. We started with homeschooling with Colby Academy in, geez, I forgot when that would have been, 2011. Um, I have two in college at Benedictine College, a sophomore and a senior this fall, and then I still have two at home, a sixth and an eighth grader. Um, we have been using a mix of Colby Homeschool and Colby Online classes, as well as um, some other sorts of things thrown in, um, Institute for Excellence in Writing. Sometimes we pick up some other sorts of things, too. Um, I'm really happy to be here. This is my second year as a parent ambassador for sixth grade. Um, and I just look forward to getting to have a talk about how we organize things and get some ideas for myself too. Kristen? Hi, my name is Kristen Pizarro. I live in Washington, DC. Currently, I am, sorry, I had a, a banana cake in the oven, I apologize long story but we serve missionaries of charity once a month and I didn't know that I was gonna go right away I apologize anyway I live in DC I have five kids we're a military family um, we've been with Colby Academy since the beginning so my oldest is going into eighth grade I have a sixth grader a third grader and a first grader and then a toddler um, we love it I love I'm a box checker, so I like that uh, Colby Academy is an open and go, and it tells me exactly what I need to do every day. I have not, I'm not adventurous, and I don't venture out outside the lines very often, so I'm always very amazed at everybody that can 
pick and choose and say, okay, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna substitute that. And I just think that's awesome. And I love that Colby is so gracious and it's like, do what works for your family. So I, I love it. It's great. Um, Becky. Hi, my name is Becky Demers or Rebecca. Um, this is our second year with Colby. I have seven kiddos and six of them are doing Colby this year. We have uh, three middle school students and two in the elementary and one kindergartner. So we're really excited to kind of start from the beginning. Um, we decided to go with Colby because we've been homeschooling from the beginning, but we wanted something that was a little more challenging and that really integrated our faith into all of the subjects. And so far it's been really awesome and I'm really looking forward to this school year. Beth. So I'm Beth Gap. Um, I live in Southern California. I have six children. Um, the oldest is gonna be a senior at Ave Maria University. The next one is sophomore at Wyoming Catholic College and then a 12th grader two 10th graders and a fifth grader. And we joined Colby um, officially when my oldest was going into high school. I wanted something um, more set because we also had been homeschooling from the beginning using a variety of things, but I wanted something uh, rigorous for high school and um, faith-filled and Colby has met that. And um, Colby is such a great, in addition to the great academics, it's also a great community. I volunteer as the, to um, help organize the student Schoology groups. And it's a great community that the, the students have um, within their class, their, you know, their class grade. And the school just uh, does so many things to foster that, that spirit of community. And um, we're really grateful. And my, um, my children love Colby, as do I. Courtney. Hi, uh, my name is Courtney. Um, I live in the Bay Area near San Francisco. I have two kids, a fourth grader and a kindergartner. Um, we've been homeschooling since my fourth grader was in kindergarten, but last year um, we started with Colby because the program we were in was through the public school and it was completely upended because they weren't allowed into the classroom even for supplies. And I thought I didn't want it that to happen again and my sister had been using Colby for four years already and she loved it so we signed up last year it was great it's really flexible um, and it helps if you have a learner who kind of has difficulties of any kind uh, my daughter has some areas where we would struggle to get things done before we met with the teacher every month. And that was really stressful for both of us. But with Colby, I know what I need to do. I have everything there to give her plenty of time, not stress myself out, not stress my daughter out. And knowing that it's flexible and I can talk to the advisors if I need help um, or anything like that is really a blessing. And the materials are good. We've pretty much stuck with Colby. Um, last year and this year the recommended materials and classes but as they get older I think I would be really interested in branching out a little bit and following their interests and that's me and back to Colby Bridget So I am actually just, um, I'm actually not a homeschooling mom yet. Eventually probably will be. Um, I am on the tech support for Colby Academy. So I'm the one you see, I'm the one behind all of the social media posts and, um, and behind all of these Facebook Fridays. So yeah, thanks for joining us. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Ladies? Okay, I was trying to share and then something happened. Uh, okay, let's start with uh, organizing a, a small room, 
versus organizing a large room. Uh, one of the best parts about homeschooling is that you can do whatever you want with the space you have. Although you don't always have to work indoors, it is always a good idea to have a dedicated room or space for schooling in your home. Maybe you want to start your days with your kids seated around the dining or kitchen table or have them each have their own desks. In addition, you might want to have some soft chairs available for breaks or reading. So we have some ideas, but we will continue with our parent ambassadors, Kearney. Okay, um, I'd like to show, um, to see if I can flip my camera. So I live in a really tiny house and in the Bay Area, basically you take what you can get. And so what I do is I have this dedicated corner and during the year I change the posters kind of to what we're currently working on. I have a calendar for the kids. I have some inspirational kind of things for us. And what I do currently, and because they're young, they don't each have that many supplies. I have one shelf that is school only and one shelf for my kindergartner, one for my fourth grader, dictionary, uh, flashcards, stuff like that. And then you can see we have a lot of books. These are all elective books um, based on their interest, reading books, research books, and things like that. I do have a tiny desk for my kindergartner, but my older one, um, we work wherever we feel like, in the dining room, sometimes outside, or we sit on her bed. Um, she has a little lap desk. So really, um, you don't need a big space. You don't need a lot of stuff. You don't need a big budget. That's what I was worried about at first, before I ever started, that my house was too small. I couldn't have a room like I would see on Pinterest and things like that. But as you can see, I have everything here. It's not messy. I know where everything is. And I think that's the most important is being organized as much as you can before you start. It's a lot less stressful for anyone. I would recommend that. Get your stuff set up before you're gonna start school. Look everything over, get rid of stuff that you don't need or pass it on to someone else. And uh, we like to collect books. So that's, it's definitely kind of a storage issue, but I cycle through them every year, um, share them around, get new ones. And so that's, I would say you don't have to worry about having a lot of space. In my case, it's worked out fine. And that's my setup. Nancy. Okay, let me get my screen share started here. There we go. Okay, um, it was just easier for me to put it all in one spot. So like I said, we've been homeschooling since, well, we've been homeschooling since 2008. We've been using Colby Academy since 2011. Um, and we've gone through a lot of different modes. And so I kind of organized it by age because I think it kind of changes as the kids grow. So um, when they're super young, I keep them occupied with things. Um, a lot of people shudder, but I say the messier, the better. Um, because it tends to hold their attention longer. So you can see I've got two of them sitting at a little picnic bench with Play-Doh, or we've got um, in the kitchen, you can see the stove back there, or we have, um, you know, Mr. Potato Head and blocks and trucks and things in the living room. Um, I try to keep the toddlers and the preschoolers away from the older kids um, so that the older kids can have some quiet space um, as they get older, we try and incorporate, you know, more of the letters and numbers. Um, the thing on the floor is this awesome, is from this awesome uh, line of products called Lauri, L, I think it's L-A-U-R-I, foam. And there's a lot of phonics, there's a lot of numbers, there's a lot of lacing cards. It's just great for the preschool and primary elementary age. And then you can see um, uh, my messy philosophy at work here 
with one of mine doing some finger painting. And I basically just gave him some plates and some paint and set them at the kitchen table and uh, let him at it. And he could just keep getting paper. And I don't know how many he made that day, but there were probably a lot of them. Um, because when they're in the primary, they, they're still, you know, the actual school part takes maybe a couple of hours. Uh, maybe by third grade, you're up to maybe three hours. Um, but it really doesn't take a lot of time. So a lot of what they're doing is fine motor skills, gross motor skills, trying to memorize stuff. Um, we spent a lot of time with the older ones playing with the younger ones. Um, and then once we get to upper elementary, we kind of transitioned to sitting at a table more. Um, we've got our stuffed animals there to keep them company. Um, they did fine for a while working at the same table facing each other but eventually we needed to get we actually got school desks i'll show in the next slide um but we got separate tables for the different kids um at that point i had four of them and we had them either in different rooms or in the same room at separate tables with their backs to each other um even so, we had, you know, erasers flying over the back trying to hit the sibling. Um, so a lot of it was a little tricky in that sense, but we um, found it useful to uh, have them not facing each other at a certain point. So, you know, here we've got two guys working on math, one doing book math, one doing sorting, and then more messy stuff. I love art. I absolutely love art. Um, I'm not an artist, but this is my daughter and we were studying um, Michelangelo. And so she's painting a Bible story with paint on the bottom of the chair. But, you know, things like that, where they're just out of their seats, doing something unusual that they wouldn't normally do otherwise um, in the dining room. So we, we work all over the place. We make sure that they have a home base. Um, the kitchen table stops being useful, at least for us, after a certain point, because then they're constantly trying to get something out of the refrigerator or <laughs> they just get distracted. Um, middle school, we switch to all desks. There's not a lot of on the floor. Um, we've used these regular school desks. Um, this is my son dissecting a frog on our porch. Um, again, we just kind of spread out and do things where they're comfortable. And then this is um, the setup that my daughter had in high school. This is actually what our room looks like now. Um, we are fortunate that we have an extra room. Well, I suppose we made it ha us have an extra room. Um, we have three boys and one girl and the three boys share a room. Um, and so we have an extra room in our house. We have, my husband likes building computers. So we don't use laptops, we use desktops and he builds them on the cheap. Um, and then we have a spot to do online classes. The door closes, so it's quiet. And we have a spot with a table um, so they can do things without the computer. Um, and then I brought up a couple of things about just how we organized our day. So when they were little, um, they didn't have a lot that they did. We made, I made little tickets for my kids. Um, you can see that it includes things like religion and math and letters, but also things like puzzles and coloring. And they'd get a sticker when they finished it. And when they filled out their whole ticket, they got some sort of prize. Maybe it was watching you know, uh, an episode of Thomas. Maybe it was getting a special um, time with mom and dad. Maybe it was reading a book. Um, they were really into trains, and so it was kind of centered around that. So it was really kind of an easy, laid-back kind of a thing. Um, as they got older, we moved to planners. Um, these are our paper planners that we've had on at different times. Um, we actually used this elementary one last year, even though my kids were in middle school. They really liked the visual way it was laid out with the weeks, the days of the week going across and the subjects going up and down. Um, and for box checkers, this was great. I could write out what they needed to do. They were very independent. You know, if they needed me, I don't know if there's one on here. Um, 
but if they if they absolutely had to start with mom, I would write on there must be with mom. Um, and they hated that because at this point they would be happy to just do it all by themselves. Um, and then the one on the right is the sixth through 12th grade planner from Colby. Um, and we would go through and write out their assignments. Sometimes there'd be times, sometimes there wouldn't. It just kind of depended on the child and the year. Um, this is from a couple of years ago. And we found that to be really helpful. They could know what they needed to do when, if they wanted to switch things around, it was fine. Um, and then I've used digital options some years. So I've made lists in Word, I've made Excel documents. I've used a digital program called Homeschool Tracker. I really liked that when my kids were in high school because it generates um, a transcript. And I know Colby keeps our transcript, but there were times when it was useful to have my own transcript. Um, and then for a while, um, I was having a hard time with my high schoolers mixing the homeschool and the high school assignments and the due dates and everything because they'd have their homeschool due dates in one place and their online due dates in Schoology. And so I actually set up for our homeschool, a Schoology school account. And so I put placeholder assignments for their homeschool stuff that was in the mix with their online stuff. And so everything showed up in one place. I stopped doing it because it was a lot of work. Um, but it really worked for those kids because they just really needed everything in one place. Um, so that's a little bit of how we've organized everything. Um, I asked my husband and each of my kids for some advice that they would want to pass on to other parents. And my husband's advice was put them in different rooms. Um, my older kids advice was, um, put them in the same room, but have them face in different directions. Don't work at the kitchen table because there's too many temptations. And, um, my next child's advice was, um, oh, wait, wait, there was one more from the older ones. Don't work in your bedroom. Stay out of your bedroom. Um, because you'll just want to go to sleep or, you just won't get something done. Um, and then my next one was, um, oh, I'm going to forget. I should have written them down. I forgot the last two. Shame on me. Uh, but those are sort of the ideas um, that we've used. Um, some things worked well, some things worked miserably. I find myself changing up what we do at least a couple times a year. When I had preschoolers and toddlers, we changed what we did probably every four weeks, three or four weeks, because the developmental abilities and the needs of my preschoolers and toddlers were changing that fast. Um, and so we rearranged rooms like once a month and we rearranged our schedule every couple of weeks and we just kept changing it up and it just made it easier for everybody to stay focused. Um, we're not really a family that sits down and watches TV or watches movies. Um, so there's a lot of breaks in our day. We go outside a lot. We move around a lot. We've had times when, you know, every 15 minutes I had one who needed to get up and just run around and come back and sit down, or he just couldn't focus on what he was trying to do. Um, you know, we've had, we've, we've come to understand that one of ours needs to really reduce the sugar in his diet. Otherwise, he can't stay focused. You know, so there's a lot of things that go on. And, and that's why he needs to stay out of the kitchen, because he'll just go grab, you know, something. Um, mine are like being really independent. And so I try to set them up in a way that they can do a lot of it on their own. Um, Oh, that was one of the, that was one advice is set your kids up so they can do it on their own, but always be there to answer any questions. Um, so uh, I'm going to end at that. And uh, I'm assuming at the end we'll have questions. So if anybody has questions, we can go there later. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you, Nancy. Great job. Kristen? Hi. OK. So <laughs> that's so funny. I'm kind of the opposite. Um, 
as a military family, I have to work within the space that I've been given in the home that we live in. Um, we have done everything from, we had two desks when I was only homeschooling, two upstairs in a separate room. I didn't have that when we moved here to DC. Um, so we had a basement that I did a half playroom, half uh, homeschool room. And I found that to be extremely distracting for a couple of my kiddos who are special needs and need to not have that distraction. Um, and then we would end up at the kitchen table anyway. So we actually lost our basement in a flood last year. So we are now at the kitchen table. This is our third year actually. Um, so I'm gonna turn it around. It's not like fancy or anything, um, but we homeschool at our kitchen table. I have just a couple of things that I got at Target. They're not like, you know, super accurate or anything. This year was something I started with my homeschool schedule. So we like to be done by lunch. Um, and this includes all our activities, our morning baskets. And then this gives them an idea. I've told them that if they don't know what they should be doing right at that moment, they can come up here and look, but I don't dictate necessarily what they have to do each minute of every day. So a couple of other things I wanted to show you. Um, I have a kid who has sensory needs who, so I have, this is a wobble disc. You stick it on a chair um, and they sit. So it's actually got two sides, one with real big bumps and then one with just little ones. And that allows them to move without moving their whole body. And then um, what I have them do is they each have a binder with the week's work all in one place they have a checkoff sheet. So it tells them exactly what they have to do for the first day, second day, third day, fourth day. Um, and then I write them out one quarter at a time, tells us what week we're on and they check it off. They cross it out as they finish it. And then I have their binder that then everything is printed out because I, um, I don't use consumables as much. So I print out each subject and the new weeks just go in there. So I just want to show you real quick. My daughter is an online school student um, and she needs a dedicated space, mainly because she needs to be out of her hair of her brothers, but also some sensory needs that need her to be in a space. So she actually has this that helps her focus. It keeps her eyes where they need to be. My kids all store their books in a Calyx system. So everybody gets a bin. Everybody's got all their books in a bin. My books are all down here. Um, and this allows me to just kind of grab what I need. Um, so other than that, we keep everything here. And I have found that I need to be with them because if they are not with me, they are not working. So our homeschool day would end up being eight and nine hours long when it wasn't needing to be that long. So we, if I keep everybody in the same room, then everybody is working because mom is there. So yes, I am near the kitchen, but for whatever reason, I don't know if it's the military thing. I don't know what it is. Snack time is at 10 and two and that's it. Um, and if you, if you aren't there for snack time, then you, you don't have a snack until the next meal. So the, I have not found that to be for our kids um, an issue, but I love that every family does what works for them. And that's the best part about homeschooling is that you find what works for you. And if you don't like the way it's working, then you change it up. So that's great. So that's my space. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, Beth? Okay, so I think I'm kind of picking up with the, the last thing that Kristen said was, you know, every different things work for different families. And the other thing is um, that Nancy said, you know, your needs change, right? Hello, Beth. We can hear you. I say younger, um, really needing me more. You know, they would, uh, so it's a, a three school age and then two toddlers at the time. And they would, the three school age ones would be around the kitchen table or, and they would be able to start the day by themselves, right? They could do handwriting by themselves. They could do a math fact sheet by themselves. They could do something by themselves. Um, and I would make a list. I started with lists, just kind of like the, the tickets that Nancy had, just uh, not, not so pretty, not so, and they didn't get stickers, they just got to cross them out. But just, you know, a simple list every night I'd make for the next morning. Um, and then 
after doing that for a couple of years, we got planners, just again, the same, same planners that Nancy showed. And my kids really got satisfaction out of putting an X through those boxes. And we also used the ones that are meant for elementary. We used those three eighth grade because the setup was great and just Xing off the box gave them a, a really good, you know, sense of accomplishment. And by, you know, fourth grade, thinking maybe third, third, fourth grade, you know, they could do a lot by themselves. There were some things that still required me, of course, but, um, but, you know, they could look at the planner and they could start their day with handwriting. They could start their day with, as I said, fact sheet, even, even maybe a math lesson or some grammar work or some writing work um, or some science. And they, uh, they didn't necessarily need me. Now I was always around because I needed to keep them on task, but I found it was really helpful to start with the younger children first, especially, you know, if you have a kindergartner and you're only doing, you know, 45 minutes or an hour of work with your kindergarten, you get that, get that done first. And then, you know, the kindergartner can play and the older children can read to the kindergartner and, you know, their breaks can be playing with the kindergartner. So you can work with, um, the, you know, so you can work with other children. And that's, you know, having a lot of children homeschool can be challenging balancing them all, but you can, you know, um, use them to your advantage also because you, you have different ones who can, you know, it's like, okay, they're taking a break. Well, they can read to the toddler. Or they can, you know, go for a walk around the block with a toddler. Or, um, so it doesn't always have to be you with the toddler, or it doesn't always have to be you with the the one who's learning to read, right? An older child can sit with the younger child who's learning to read also. And I think, and then once my children got older and started doing online classes, we started online classes in eighth grade um, with most of my kids. And then they really do need a dedicated space. And even depending on the temperament of the kids as they get older, you know, they, they might need a space. And we've done different things. We've done, you know, one at one table and then the others, you know, at a, like a little, a little uh, lower kid size table. Um, we've done the school desk, you know, typical school desks, both, um, you know, the ones that you put the books in and then the ones where the books go under the chair, you, you know, you can probably find them. I, we got them for like $5 each, you know, so school getting rid of them. Um, and then as my kids got older, they got desks and they do, they do work. The older ones do work in their rooms. Well, some of them share a room, so they can't always be in at the same time for online classes, but you know, you just, some of them come in my room, you know, we set up a tray table in my room with a chair and somebody does an online class in, in my bedroom on a, you know, at a, at a, on a tray table with a chair. Um, it's online classes. It is important for the, for them to have their own space. Um, what else I think? Um, oh, and then planning. So planning your, planning your time, you know, I would, as I said, I would do the lists by the, um, you know, by the day when they were younger and then work, working to the planners, you know, planning by the week, you know, on, on Saturday, plan for the next week, it's all laid out. Um, they would, you know, they, they'd go into the week knowing what they, what they had for a week and they could even work ahead if they wanted to, you know, I'd say needed less of me. And, you know, I think, um, oh, and, oh, and then when something I found in this, I only needed for my, um, my, my current two 10th graders, but I didn't do this with my other kids. But um, I think Kristen mentioned, you know, the time would just spread out. You spend nine hours on a school day when you really only need five or something like that. But um, but I found really helpful saying how much time this should take. So for my, I think when they were in seventh grade, maybe I started or maybe eighth grade, but I did this last year for my ninth graders. It's like, okay, you are going to spend even for their online classes, you know, you're going to spend um, one and a half hours on Tuesday on this subject because otherwise as probably all you parents know whether it's chores or schoolwork you know kids kind of spread things out for the time they have right they have available um so you only have an hour or an hour and 15 minutes or an hour and a half or 45 minutes or whatever you want to decide for this particular subject on this day and as much as you get finished you get finished and if you don't get it all finished i would never do it so that it was due that night and they didn't have time but you know with the idea of if the assignment thinking of an online class the assignment is due on thursday you know, hopefully it'll be finished by Tuesday because I have allotted enough time throughout the week for them to, to finish in that amount of time. But if not, you know, then they can they can finish it up on, you know, the day before. Um, but I think for kids who, have, who are challenged as far as managing their time, um, you know, telling them whatever you can finish in this time. And at first that was actually really stressful for them. They said, oh, we're never going to be able to just do what you can in this time. And they actually came to really like that. 
Um, but I think, you know, just whatever works, all these different ideas, you know, some, some ideas, you know, some people say one thing works for them, the other person says it doesn't work for them. And then, you know, it's just for you to find out uh, if it works for you. Thank you, Beth. So we're moving now into the um, morning basket. A lot of families, especially the ones with younger kids, like to start their homeschooling day off with this. Uh, your children might take turns reading aloud, do arts and crafts, or work on handwriting or grammar exercises. You may want to choose a couple of good books to teach your children about a special topic in social studies or science. But I know some of you, especially the, the, the ones with younger kids, might have some, some other ideas. Um, Kristen. So this is my morning basket. Oops, sorry, let me turn it. I apologize. Um, and I, I actually, my eighth grader even, uh, and my sixth grader love this. This was something we started last year and I'm so glad we did. So we pick a song that everybody has to be at the table. So this comes over to the table. We pick a Christian song and we play it on the radio. And then everybody has to be sitting at the table by the time the song is done. And then we start with our morning prayers. So last year I laminated some prayers that we do. So we start with like a Bible verse. We do prayers. Then I do the readings for the day for mass. And then the saint of the day. So I have this great set of books that gives me the saint of the day. Um, after we do the saint of the day, then we do the pledge of allegiance and I do an app called bedtime math. And it is one math problem that can be split across different age groups. So you have one for little ones, like find something white in this room, that's a circle and then getting progressively harder. Um, and then I rotate. So I actually have a, what we do kind of on a daily basis and we do Latin recitation, math of the day, Mondays we do art. We memorize poems that I have in a, it's in my binder here. Um, and so we just kind of switch it up, but my kids all look forward to it. We do geography of the world, which is geography set to songs. And so even my kindergartner last year could tell you where parts of Africa were that even I before last year was not really familiar with. So it's been fabulous. Um, it's m what I wish I would have started with when I first started homeschooling. So I didn't know about it. Um, I cannot say enough good things about it. It doesn't have to be the way I do it. There's so many things out there. Um, Pam Barnes has got some great ideas of how she does her morning basket. And I just kind of took it from there. I, I took what I wanted out of like the Charlotte Mason type of curriculum and put it into the classical because they meld so well together. So even if it's doing a nature walk on Fridays and, and doing some journaling and some, um, drawing of what they see and, and all of that. It's just, it's been our time to come together as a family before we start our day of schoolwork, which was the whole point for me to, to keep my kids at home, to homeschool them, is that I wanted to spend more time with them. And this gives us a more meaningful way to do that for my family. Not sure if uh, thank you thank you Kristen not sure if uh, uh Kearney, are you working on the morning basket or you know you we can hear Sorry. you is it can you hear me okay so I do typically um do something like that during the school year especially for I would say kindergarten first grade um I kind of would try to have a theme uh, depending on what we were working on. Seasonal, you know, like harvest or Christmas, Valentine's Day, little crafts, or I would get workbooks um, even from the dollar store, take them apart a few pages at a time, staple them together, handwriting, um, picture books and things like that. Uh, I don't really do that anymore now that my daughter's going into fourth grade because we have so much other work to do, but I would definitely recommend it for preschool, kindergarten, first grade. Um, but my son, he likes to do projects. I try to keep clay around and paints and things like that. And then I try to have a theme that we're working with or we, you know, pick up flowers outside, pick leaves 
paint them, press them, stuff like that, just depending what's going on during the year and or trying to incorporate it with the lessons that we're working on. Um, it's really fun. I, I don't do it in the summer. Um, we've just been doing a little bit of practice work each day, things that they both need to work on. But in general, I would say it's a good start to the day. And also if you need time to work with your older ones or get things ready, um, having a little busy basket is really helpful. Thank you, Courtney. Um, Nancy? Hi, yeah, so we don't actually use a basket, but we do meet together basically three times a day um, so that we can kind of come together as a family. So we start in the morning um, with, we do the readings of the day and we make our morning offering and then if there's any sort of logistical things or if somebody has an appointment, if we're ending early because there's a field trip or whatever, we'll talk about that in the morning. Um, as my kids got older and had online classes that started at eight, sometimes we didn't actually start our day with that because they just got up in time to make it to class, um, which was fine with me. We, we have kind of a late night sometimes with sports and other activities and so you know sometime in the morning we would have a set time when we would all gather together and read the daily readings and make a morning offering and then at noon we would get together again and we'd pray the angelus um again sometimes somebody had an online class and so we weren't necessarily all there but we would try to have lunch together um they would generally all go outside and play together um, we tried to take at least an hour in the middle of the day. Like I said, my kids don't sit well in one place. And so they really needed all that uh, break in the middle of the day. And then it's kind of come and gone, but we've tried to make sure that at three o'clock we would gather um, and pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And so that was our goal to be finished before three so we could all get together and end our day with the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Although I found that once they got to Colby High School with the online classes and the mix, uh, my high schoolers really had work to do beyond that. Um, but we would still try and meet at three o'clock and do that. So we didn't have a morning basket per se. Um, even when I had infants and toddlers, I just didn't. I mean, I was like the other ladies and I always started with the little guys as far as whatever they needed to do. But I have really fiercely independent kids. And so, I mean, that's why I devised the little tickets because they were quite happy to just have this and know what they needed to go do. And they liked feeling big, like their big brothers and sisters and, you know, do this by themselves. And so um, I, I have memories of, uh, we used IEW for writing and some of the courses come with videos and there's a binder. And there were my four kids, my preschooler, my kindergartner, you know, and my older two, and everybody wanted a binder and everybody sat there watching Andrew Pudua tell us dumb jokes. Um, it was always just kind of getting people together at different points in the day because we wanted to be together as a family. So it wasn't just a morning basket but there were point, different points when we connected as a family and had something set that we did together. Thank you, Nancy. Um, we heard about the morning basket for the first time back when my daughter was at a Catholic school. Every morning when the teachers uh, were getting ready with the stuff at seven, at seven in the morning, and uh, receiving the kids and everything. They used to have a morning basket with full of books and uh, activities, handwriting exercises. So uh, when we moved into homeschooling, uh, it was a great idea just to continue with the same, the, the, the same activities and then start our, our prayer at 7.30. And it, it was a great time for, for both of us. And, and uh, well, it's something that we remember very well because we, uh, the, the, the bonding we, we have together, uh, it's, it, it was great. And, and I think it was, the, uh, it was the thing for, ah, I'm sorry. I'm just mixing my ideas. Uh, we were very happy with um, all the, these activities. So um, let me share the last, um, 
thing. Our last point is more about sharing homeschooling resources that might help us throughout the, our daily journey. Um, I would like to mention that some of the COVID podcasts offer great advice, not just to experienced homeschooling families, but also parents just starting out. And if you want to check out the, 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 the specifically the, the, four, the uh, 4, 5, 6, 36, 43, and 49, they are great for organization and starting your day. And also a few books, a very, you know, Teaching from the Rest is, uh, I, I guess, the, the, one of the top five books for homeschooling. Um, it's just not talking about the, 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 the types of homeschooling, but ideas, just like the ones we talked today. And then we have, I can see, Minimalist Homeschooling and can see the other one, I'm sorry, because I have the, oh, Call of the Wild and Free. So ladies, do you have any other um, resources that you might want to share? I um, like to follow the Rainbow resource. They send out really big catalogs um, a couple times a year. There's so many things in there. And then they also have written, not just products, but recommendations, letters from parents and things like that. Um, I've gotten a lot of ideas from there. Obviously you don't have to buy it from them. You can look it up on Amazon or something, but they have a lot of products, all ages, every, all kids. Um, they do have religious materials in there. Um, and that's the good thing about the catalogs is it's separated by religious, secular, neutral, so depending what you're looking for or what you want, it really helps. And uh, I do follow a lot of homeschooling pages on Instagram and Facebook just to get ideas, sometimes pictures, uh, videos, things like that. There's a lot out there. Um, just depending on what you're interested in, what your kids are interested in, it helps a lot. Kristen? Catholic Sprouts is one of those podcasts that are great for like listening if you need something to listen to. Um, I actually do my best not to dive into all the things because then I tend to feel like I'm doing it all wrong. Um, I did read, I'd like uh, teaching from rest. Uh, Sarah McKenzie is actually Catholic and she's got some great perspectives. She's got uh, kids pretty spaced out. So it was a really great um, resource to be like, okay, well, how do you do different age groups? Um, and Nancy had some great ideas for how to handle those different age groups. So those are really good resources. Um, I lean on a lot of the home. We have a really big homeschool group here. It's not a co-op. Um, there's like 60 families, 200 kids. We have a homeschool house and we do a mentoring moms every month and so I kind of lean on them a lot for help and and all of that and I, I highly recommend finding other if you can other homeschooling moms or even just a way to talk with other people not so that you necessarily can get other ideas but just so you can vent and you know like get some you're doing okay and everything's going to be all right and your kids are great and you're doing great sometimes we need that right because we're at home with our kids all day that's my suggestion. Thank you, Kristen. Beth? We can hear you. Sorry. Um, I, you know, I don't follow a lot of blogs and things like that, but um, there was one, there is one, and it's not specifically homeschool, but she homeschools, and I think she has eight or nine children, but it's called Shower of Roses. It's a blog. I can type it. I don't know. It'll go to everybody. Um, everyone. It's called Shower of Roses, and it's, she's Catholic. The mom is Catholic, and she has a lot of really good um, literature suggestions, like if, you know, if you're looking for something beyond, you know, what school suggests literature, like a lot of good book, reading books, and just, um, I don't know. I've gotten a lot out of reading some of her things. So. Thank you, Beth. Um, Becky? Um, yeah, so we 
I, I try to stay off Pinterest because I'm, I'm that kind of person that I will compare and, and feel inadequate when I see all these amazing uh, things that parents do for their kids. Um, and I am really unorganized. I have a really hard time managing my time. So one of the draws to Colby was their online program. And last year was, I believe, the first time they did it for the younger kids, so kindergarten through fifth grade. And it was miraculous because a lot of that planning of the curriculum, what are the kids going to learn and when was already done. And so now what I have to do is just manage their study time, manage their homework time. So it's a little bit more like um, what I remember as traditional school, you go to school, the teachers teach, and then you come home and, and your parents make sure they're doing your homework and your chores. And um, so that really took a lot of the guesswork out for me. And um, so as far as like extracurricular resources, there, there was one place, I think it's called Teachers Pay Teachers. And you can find some really fun activities to do for the younger kids to kind of fill in some time when you want them to kind of stay out of the way when you're trying to help an older kid with a bigger project. Um, but yeah, that, that's about it. Because like I said, that the Colby homeschooling online portion of it is just so complete for our family that I haven't felt the need to really put um, anything outside of it uh, into it, so. Thank you, Becky. Um, Nancy? Um, so oh, where's my video? There we go. Um, I have a couple of things that I've used over the years. Um, one of the things um, that I read way early on was designing your own classical curriculum. Um, and that uh, isn't really what Colby is, but it really gave me a good perspective for what homeschooling could be and how it should look different from um, classroom school. Uh, because my first inclination was to kind of make classroom school look like, make, make it look like classroom school at home. Um, our kids have been in school sometimes, the older ones. And so um, we kind of kept it on the classroom side, but not so much. The other two things, um, I'm a scientist. And so the whole humanities side of things um, was really challenging for me in the beginning. And so I really had to teach myself. And so the two things that I found to be very beneficial to me was going through the Institute for Excellence in Writing teaching class, because it taught me how to teach writing. And then there's Center for Lit, um, which taught me how to teach literature. Um, and so those two programs were just fantastic um, for me personally, because those were sort of holes in my ability to teach my kids. Um, the other sort of resources, I'm not a big Pinterest or Instagram or Facebook, um, but I do some Facebook. There's um, a Catholic uh, what is it called? Embrace Catholic Moms Community. It originally started out um, as the Facebook lounge for a homeschool conference, but there's a lot of great things going on in there. Um, and then there are the class Facebook pages that Colby Academy has set up. So I'm a moderator for the, uh, they'd be sixth graders this year, the sixth grade page. And that is a great place to ask questions um, and to just, uh, we're hoping to make it more like a community of moms um, and try and get people more involved with those uh, class Facebook pages. And so I think that's a great place to tap into experienced moms resources. Um, yes, join us in the Colby Class of 2030 group. Right. Um, somebody asked about practicing piano or other instruments. We always put that in the afternoon and evening. Now, I don't know how many you're trying to work in there, um, but some days it got kind of crazy uh, to do it. Um, one of the things we did in the beginning before we had a, a regular piano is we had a digital piano and the benefit of that was they could put headphones on and we they actually could practice during the day and then they had headphones to do that. Um, but we have regular piano, uh, an acoustic piano now, and they just practice at the end of the day. So they practice later on, maybe after dinner, maybe, you know, while somebody else is at karate practice. So we just kind of work that all in there, um, mom and dad as well. So um, I think that was the questions. I didn't think there was another one. So 
Yes, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you to all of you. And this concludes our presentation. Um, back to Bridget. Thank you all very much for all of that information. Um, it was super, super helpful. But I did want to open up the floor to see if anybody had any questions that you guys might be willing to answer. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat in Zoom or comment on Facebook. So we'll give you a minute to do that. From All Cecilia, right. I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> From Cecilia, any ideas for keeping a terrible two-year-old busy, ladies? <laughs> Becky? Um, yeah, I, I do actually have a two-year-old and she is very energetic and quite loud. Um, this will be our second year with Colby online. So last year, obviously she was a little bit younger and easier to kind of control, but we did have a four-year-old running around. So um, again, I'm doing it all online. So we don't have the binders and I'm not in charge of the schedule per se, as far as when classes go. Um, so we're kind of at the mercy of the school. And so when that happens, I will have to kind of take a step back from the kids who are doing the classes. And I personally would just have to entertain the little ones. Um, my suggestions are art, lots of art and lots of music because that uh, engages their minds and engages their bodies and it keeps them occupied. My favorite are the color wonders because they do not draw on a couch. So if one of your older kids has a question and you need to, for example, just kind of go help them out with the problem with their, their video feed or their headphones aren't working, you can walk away and come back and there won't be, you know, black marker all over your wall or anything like that because they don't color in anything but special paper. Um, that stuff is awesome. And we're blessed in that we all kind of can coexist in a similar space so I can hear my older children um, if they need help, um, but still be separate enough that the little kids can't get to them. So if you have that ability to kind of cordon off a near your family room, for example, or a den, or if you have a patio and the weather's nice, being in a place where you can still hear your older children who are doing school, but you can still really interact with your little kids, that, that's worked out really well for us. Um, and like I said, having music to play that they can listen to while you are watching them or helping older kids has also been something that really helped us out, so. Thank you, Becky. Um, from, uh, yes. Oh, okay. So go, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Ben. No, just addressing that, like having um, like a box or a bin of toys that are just for school time, you know, it was really helpful. It's like, these are the puzzles. Somebody mentioned big puzzles, um, like big puzzles, or, you know, if, if it's a Play-Doh or whatever it is, but this is like their school time activity, right? Even though, you know, it's, it's their play, but it's their school time activity. And they actually would look forward to, you know, those school time things, and whether it's you doing it with them or, um, as I mentioned before, you know, having the older kids take turns working with them, um, that's been, you know, that, that kind of gives it a purpose, right? Not just playing, but oh, look, our school puzzle. Thank you, Ben. What their older siblings do too, and they feel they. Thank you, Beth. Um, Kristen? Uh, busy bag was one that I did for my, uh, he's ADHD, but um, 
my kiddo. So always had to be moving, had to be doing something. And Pinterest has a really great uh, multiple boards of busy bags. And so just like a freezer Ziploc bag of something they could do, lacing activities, or I had um, an alpha, a traceable alphabet. So it was in like road form and he had a matchbox car that he would trace and he would do school with everybody else. Um, so lots of like fine motor, gross motor, um, setting up like an obstacle course. If you've got the space in the living room, depending on how much they need that. I currently have an 18 month old. Um, that's been a challenge. I can do the first year of life. No problem with schooling. It's usually the one to two, almost to three that is really hard for me because they aren't quite ready for the busy bags. They just, they want to be big. Um, and I, I just do my best to incorporate them, incorporate them at the table and um, to play music. I really like that idea. That's what we do, um, whatever they kind of want to groove to. And we have the toys for them there um, and kind of rotating bigger kids in to spend a couple, like their break to, to spend a couple of minutes with them and getting some sibling time in. So just some ideas. Thank you, Kristen. Um, from Kristen, I would love to know if any of you work part-time outside the home and how you share organization with another caregiver. Any of you? Um, I don't work outside the house, but I have considered it. And what I would do if I had to share the school with somebody, and I think um, depending on the age of the kids, uh, obviously would make a difference, but I would have a notebook or a binder or something. And, you know, if I was primarily in charge of it, I would write down what needs to be done, put all the materials together, put any extra things in there and printouts and stuff like that. Um, I don't think it would be impossible. I think as long as you have a communication with the other person, it would be fine. Um, the key definitely is organizing it beforehand and not like five minutes, you know, before you're switching, uh, you're leaving the house or taking them to their grandparents or something. Um, as long as you're organized, I think it totally could work. Um, so in DC, you actually can't, so where I live, um, you can't pass on teaching to anyone else. However, um, we have many uh, people who come in and they have to, they're spouses either work outside the home or they have to go to school as well. And so what they do is they actually set their kids up for the entire day the night before. So they do some kind of like binder or folders or whatever. And the nanny or educator is there only as a help because in DC, they cannot teach your kids. Um, so I would make sure that you are complying with that. But if you're still the primary educator, you can set them up the night before. So if they're fiercely independent and just want um, someone there that they can ask a question to, if they don't understand, that's awesome. If you need to teach the math lesson for the next day, doing it the night before or anything else like that. Um, I know it's a long day if you're working outside the home, but that's something to consider. Thank you, Kristen. Um, okay, from Anne. We are doing a self-paced course and we have been admitted this week. We don't know how to start the course. Um, maybe it's about um, technology, maybe Bridget? I mean, I can say something because oh, we sorry. did that last time. Um, first of all, there's gonna be a webinar coming up or maybe it just was on getting started with, with uh, self-paced classes. Um, but the self-paced classes are delivered on Schoology. So you should have gotten something from tech with Schoology logons for your child. And then once they log in, they will have it under their courses. And so um, the people, if you, if you start a chat with tech support, if you're having any trouble, they can get you going, but that's how it goes. So inside Schoology, there will be a course that's your self-paced course and they'll click through a bunch of different folders Okay, I just saw next week is gonna be the self-paced orientation. So you'll click into the folder and there'll be a short video for each day or sometimes for each week. And um, it'll pace your child through and they'll list what's assigned and which assignments you turn in. But yeah, the self-paced orientation is Tuesday, August 10th at 2 p.m. Eastern, so. 
Yep. And you, they still, even though the videos and the assignments are through Schoology, they turn, they turn them into you. So as the parents, so we've done, this is our second year doing one self-paced course and you keep track of all their grades for it, even though they do like an online quiz um, and they're getting all their assignments and the recorded lesson through Schoology. Thank you, Kristen. Um, well, thank you so much to everyone for attending. And uh, Bridget, thank you so much for inviting us. Oops, sorry, I was muted. Yeah, thank you all so much for um, spending the past hour with us. I know that this was really helpful for, I'm sure, everyone. Um, just to bounce ideas back and forth. And one thing I did want to make sure that you do is definitely join the Facebook parent groups. Uh, we just had an email with those go out this past week. So again, please join those so that you can talk to other parents of students and have that sense of community. And then if you do ever need anything, please know that we are here to help you. Um, and we're available on tech support and many other ways as well if you need anything. So again, thank you so much.